Yes guys, what's going on people? Welcome back to my personal channel. Welcome back to another episode of 5 Things We Learned for you guys. This is probably going to be the last 5 Things We Learned for at least the next 2 weeks with Chelsea going into their final international break of 2020. And um, what a way to end it. I mean, unbeaten our last 8 games, we won our last 4 games in a row. And we finally look to be breaking the lock against teams that put a low block against us. And the key to that lock is Hakim Ziyech, man. What a player. We're going to delve deeper into that into this video. But as usual, before we start this video, if you guys haven't done so already, please smash that like button, hit that subscribe button, and press that bell notification button as well to get us a bit closer to that 20k mark that we're trying to reach. We're getting closer to 17k. I think the free videos in the last 18 hours have probably been a big reason for that. But if you want to see more regular content like that, as well smash it in the comment section below and yeah let's go straight into five things we learn first talking point and i want to talk about the way we responded to going one nil down because this game wasn't as typical as we have seen from chelsea in recent games it was also uncharacteristic from us that we went one nil down which is again a massive surprise to even be saying that but i want to talk about how far we've grown over Maybe you can even say from the start of the season, I'm going to go further back and talk about last season as well. And that's why I wanted to talk about this first point, the response to conceding, because... Honestly, I don't know if we would have won this game last season. I don't even know if we would have won this game at the start of the season. We have been so bad when it comes to breaking teams down with a low block. Or especially conceding early goals to teams in the lower half of the table. who just come back to sit deep and defend. We've shown through many times last season and even some periods throughout the start of this season. We struggle to break down a low block. We struggle to break down a team that comes to Chelsea only trying to get a point. Or even trying to just go and get the three points. Or if they end up getting an early goal. Which shows the huge difference between Chelsea then to Chelsea now because I, I don't know if you man saw it in my watch along But as soon as we went 1-0 down, I weren't even that worried Usually when we concede goals, I'm raging or something like that But at this point I was looking at it and I was like, okay, cool 1-0 down, 10 minutes in We've got the we've got the squad now. We've got the setup. I do think we can break down a team like this It's only going to take a matter of time and there was a bit of optimism about it. I was also interested to see how Chelsea would react to going 1-0 down. Because we've seen Chelsea on the front foot for so long since this change to 4-3-3. It was interesting to see how we would adapt to actually being on the back foot for once. And it didn't change a thing. It, all it meant was that it took a little bit longer for us to break them down, but we still broke them down eventually. We knew that our goal was going to come, and we knew as soon as we got that equaliser, the game was going to open up a little bit more for us, and that is exactly what happened. So, first talking point, we can now break down these low blocks. Second talking point, I want to talk about competition throughout this Chelsea squad, because competition is so fierce right now, and the standard is just continuing to be raised and raised. And you know what? The Chelsea players are living up to that standard as well. Right now, the whole squad looks to finally be connecting well. And I think we've got good options in nearly every area of the pitch right now. The only area where I'm still a little bit worried about in terms of our depth is left back. But we still look to be in for another left back as well as another DM. So God knows the shape that this team's going to be in the next year. But we are in a really good place right now. One player I want to zero in on is Tammy Abraham. A player that at the start of the season we all was, was thinking was going to be third choice player this season. And now I'm looking at this lineup thinking, does Christian Pulisic even get back into this lineup when he comes back from injury anyway? Because granted, Christian Pulisic does need to get over this little injury prone trait that's starting to develop more and more into his game. But Tammy Abraham, every single time this guy gets an opportunity, he's taking it. And we thought we would be seeing the same Tammy Abraham from last season who looked really out of it and passed. Well, I won't say passed it, but he looked looked really overplayed towards the February March period of the season and we didn't know if we were going to get the same Tammy Abraham back from the start of the season but he has been ridiculous this season he's had 12 appearances so far this season has had nine goals and assists that equals to a goal contribution every 59 minutes for him which is absolutely ridiculous his hold-up play has has improved tenfold since he first joined us I remember back in the first opening games when he was getting played regularly for us he was struggling to deal with the physical battle of the Premier League. Now, his hold-up play is ridiculous. He's getting involved the link-up play with other players as well. He's, he's creating an amazing partnership with Timo Werner as well. He's also creating chances and finding the right positions for himself. Inside the box, he is getting smarter and smarter. And you can see that perfectly for the first goal as well. The way he dropped deep just to find the extra five yards of space. Just to give him the room to go for the shot. Tammy Abraham has been in amazing form. And now there's... a 
massive selection headache for Frank Lampard after the next international break because Pulisic should be back and Kai Havertz should be back as well. And now there are players that are playing well that might not be justified to sit on the bench for longer. Mateo Kovacic just came on and nearly scored twice. He was imperious today as well. Even, well, defensively, I think the back four speaks for itself. But even with the attack, we've already spoken about Tammy Abraham. I don't know how Pulisic gets back into this lineup right now with how good the front three have been, have been performing in recent weeks. Point three, and we are going to delve into the Moroccan magician himself, Hakim Ziyech. Seriously, Hakim Ziyech, every time I watched him on the ball, it was like a work of art. Six chances created yesterday, which I think is the most by a Premier League player in a single match this season. Four fouls won, two assists yesterday as well, but realistically, he could have had about four. Every time he got onto that left foot in just a little bit of space, there was danger and there was threat, and he was absolutely ridiculous. Now, I know I've mentioned it so many times, so I'm going to mention it again. Ziyech honestly makes up for all those times I put up with Willian. The quality of crossing from that right-hand side now with, with Hakim Ziyech and Reese James in as well, because I'm going to add into this as well. It'd be disrespectful to leave him out. The left level of crossing on that right hand side has just increased tenfold and I'm going to say that for our set pieces as well having Hakim Ziyech on them is different gravy man he has been absolutely ridiculous every time he got the ball and he was looking forwards he was a constant threat and he was always trying to pass forwards as well none of this sideways passes or I'm not sure about an option every time he hit a long ball it was into a dangerous area of the pitch and it was a massive threat for Sheffield United to deal with and honestly I think we found the cheat code against these low blocks and his name is Hakim Ziyech because all we need is a player that is going to consistently deliver the ball into dangerous areas and that is where the opportunity for a threat is so yeah point number two Hakim Ziyech another deserved man of the match if he keeps these performances up it wouldn't be disrespectful to call him the best player in the Premier League I'm not going to say it right now I'm going to say on form he is up there but I'm not going to throw it all out there because I know if he ends up flopping in about two or three games, that's just going to get clipped. We, we're we going to be calm. We're still going to keep our feet on the ground here when it comes to Hakim Ziyech. But honestly, I haven't felt this excited in a long time about a player. Hakim Ziyech looks damn near world class. And I have no idea how he's been in the Eredivisie for so long and how no other club has snapped him up yet. Absolutely ridiculous player. Point four, and we're going to talk about Thiago Silva and the Thiago Silva effect. Now, we're highlighting Thiago Silva because he got his first Chelsea goal, but we realistically could have put him on any of these top fives for any game he's had since joining us, except maybe the West Brom game. But even that game was just one mistake and what was otherwise a good game for him. And his impact on this Chelsea team has been crucial to our defensive solidity. His reading of the game is amazing and he's always finding himself in the right position to the pitch at the right time. And I told you guys that pace thing was not going to be a factor when it came to Thiago Silva. It was all about reading the game and the play that you put next to him, Kurt Zuma. Because Kurt Zuma's the one that can do that leg work his re like i already said his reading of the game is perfect for this as well because he's keeping kurt zuma in the right areas of the pitch too and kurt zuma is gonna learn from that that's why me and probably I, I, I can't really name but probably everyone who's been on youtube was calling for kurt zuma and tiago silva as our attack as our defensive two center backs and they've been imperious since they um i'd call them the best two center backs we've had in the league right now on terms of form we might actually be the best defense in the league too i know we're the best in terms of aerial ability but tiago silva is a huge reason for why we are so good defensively and we're not having any of those mistakes and lapses in concentration that we used to see so regularly from our defense last season another underrated part of this game his passing from deep is basically like having another deep line playmaker and if there's any reason why N'Golo Kante as a lone DM has been working against these low blocks it's because we're not going straight from center back to DM and putting the pressure on him when he's on the ball we're putting a long ball towards either the wingers or we're putting it towards the number eights and then we're getting it back to Kante who's got his face to goal so this is another reason why Thiago Silva has been absolutely excellent for us since joining we all really expected it to be like I 
already said many times in videos about Thiago Silva, I wasn't worried about his age. The way the guy recovers and looks after himself is to the same level Cristiano Ronaldo does. And look at the age and the level of performance that Cristiano Ronaldo is still churning out. And tell me that you don't believe Thiago Silva can't play at the top level for at least another two or three years. Thiago Silva, unbelievable defender. And with Virgil van Dijk out injured for the rest of the season, the best centre-back in the Premier League right now. That you can clip. Final talking point, and we're not going to talk too deep about this, but I did want to mention it anyway, just because it is so good to see us back at this strong point again. Set pieces, defensively and offensively, we are a joke right now. Shout out Anthony Barry as well, because he got brought into the Chelsea assistant manager team to fix up to fix up our set pieces, and he's had a massive job at doing that so far. But offensively and defensively, we have been excellent. Defensively, the trio of Edouard Mendy, Kurt Zuma, and Thiago Silva, and Ben Chilwell as well, because we got a shout out as aerial ability too. Those four have done a madness in making sure that we are tight at the back. And going forward, crosses are pointless now against us. Corners are pointless now against us, because Edouard Mendy with his massive arms is just going to catch everything that comes near to him. Offensively as well, when you've got Hakim Ziyech stepping up for a free kick, you know there's going to be damage done regardless. Two assists for him already, and he already got the second assist off a set piece that he probably could have gone for goal with as well, because it was the same angle as that Chelsea Ajax game last season, where he just dunked it over Kepa's head. But again, Kepa tax, can't go too much into it. But like we said, offensively, we were excellent. Defensively, we were brilliant as well. And our set pieces are so good now. It's now a massive strength of our game where if you turn back a year ago, it was a massive weakness in our game. Whenever there was a corner or there was a cross, it'd be, oh crap, someone's going to be on Kepa or who's going to make the mistake this time. Or if it was offensively, it's a, oh great, William's going to hit the first man in the corner. Yes, I can't wait. Now, we ain't got to worry about that. We have so many more options. And this is the period of time that we're waiting for. We all said from the start of the season, there's a little gelling process we are, where we aren't going to look as good as we should be. But we're going to get past that. And we look now to be finally getting past that. So yeah, international breaks come at the wrong time. Or in the right time in certain cases, especially in the Kai Havertz cases, the perfect time for the international break. But after this, we got another six months of just pure club football and it's going to get tight. The Christmas period is going to be coming and that with Champions League football means this is going to be the most cramped fixture list of all time. But guys, just strap up and enjoy the ride because this season is going to be utterly ridiculous. Guys, this is the end of five things we learned. Let me know if you agree or disagree with any of my thoughts down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G and I'll see you guys very soon. Take care and up the chills.